So here, what, what they added? They said, now, the internal audit activity conforms with the standards when it's achieved the outcome described in the definition, code of ethics and the standards. So look here what they said. They said, if the internal auditor is following the definition, the code of ethics and the standards, that way they are performing their job correctly. And after that, they said the results of the uh, quality assessment and improvement program include the results of both internal and external assessment. All internal audit activity will have results of the internal audit assessment. Internal audit activity in existence for the last five years will have the results of the external assessment. Because we say after five years we do external assessment. So what's the need of it? Our role as an internal audit is to do what? To go to the organization and say, okay, let's see if you are following your standards and rules and if you are complying with everything that you need to comply with, correctly. But at the same time, what they are saying here, that also for us, for our internal audit department, we have to comply with the rules and regulations of the internal audit. And someone is going to come and make sure that we are following the rules and regulations. So that way, someone is auditing the auditor, right? So this is the main concept here that they added. Now, next one, auditor opinions. So they change uh, some, something related to auditor opinions. We have three changes. If you can see it, it's really easy to, uh, easy to understand the changes. The first one is related to planning. After that, it's related to communicating the opinion. And after that, it's related to overall opinions. So the first one is related to planning. What they are saying, the chief audit executive needs to understand the key shareholders' expectations for opinions at the planning stage. So the first thing, if you are doing an audit, you go to the manager and you say, okay, what is your expectation? We are going to audit your department, your division. You're like, I want to make sure that, I think that you are going to go and make sure that they are doing their job fine. I think you are going to go and audit the finance. You're like, no, 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 this is our scope, this is what we are going to do. So that way it's essential for you to understand what are their expectations before you go, uh, go and do the job. After, see the same thing, the requirement of communicating the opinion. When you are communicating the opinion, you need to make sure that you are considering their expectation. Because they come to you and say, we expect you that you are going to audit our financial report. You tell them, no, we are just auditing this section. We are just auditing uh, these individuals or these statements. So that way, when you are communicating the results, you need to go back and say, remember, you said that you are thinking that we are going to audit all this. We didn't audit all that. This is what we just audited. So you need also to consider their expectations. Finally, we are looking at the overall opinion. We are saying the requirement of overall opinion. You be like, what is overall opinion? If you are going to an organization, and if you are auditing this division, this department, uh, this uh, like your functions, this process, and after that, you want to offer the board of directors in the meeting, overall opinion saying, okay, this is our opinion based on everything that we did. So that way, it's not required for you to do this because you can offer opinion based on each process, but when you are offering this overall opinion, what requirements you should have? So these are the main changes. Let's go over them one by one. 2010. So 2010. See, now we move towards to the performance attributes. So 2010 led to uh, plan. Look what they added. They say the chief audit executive must identify and consider the expectations of the senior manager, the board, and other shareholders for the internal audit uh, opinions and other cons uh, conclusions. See, so the first one, in the planning, we need to understand the expectation of the shareholders. Okay, we go to communicating. Okay, so communicating results. Look what they added here. They said now final communication of the uh, engagement result must where uh, appropriate uh, certain uh, uh, content, the internal audit opinion and conclusion. When issued, an opinion or conclusion must take in account the uh, expectation of the senior uh, management. The board, uh, the other shareholders, and must support it by sufficient, reliable, relevant, and useful. See what they are saying here? At the same time, there you need to say, okay, this is what we did, and you need to support it with all the information that you have. What they added also, opinions at the engagement level may be rating, conclusions, and other descriptions of the result. Such an engagement may be in relation to control, the, 
to control the about the specific process risk and business unit. The formation of such opinion requires consideration of the engagement result and their significance. So what they are saying here, when you are communicating the results, when you are communicating overall opinion, you need to really focus on the significant items. You don't spend like 10 hours speaking about everything you did. You look at the main significant issues and you provide them and you provide support for them. So this is the main change here. Now if we look at the overall opinion, let's see what they added. Look, they added quite a bit. So overall opinions, what they are saying here, first they are saying, okay, what is overall opinion? They are saying when an overall opinion is issued, it must take into account the expectation of the senior or management. See how they focus on this? Definitely it's going to be a question in the CI exam. And after that they are saying, or the communicating will identify the scope including the time period to which the opinion uh, related to. So that way I need to understand the time, the time frame, I need to understand the scope limitation, I need to understand everything related to the, the, the assurance from other providers that we rely on other like uh, assurance provider. What about the risk or control framework? And if we have, uh, if we are considering other, any other criteria when we are using an overall opinion. And at the same time, the overall opinion, judgment, and conclusion reach. And the most important thing is here, the reasons for unfavorable overall opinion must be stated. So if we are telling the board, we think that there's something wrong, we think that um, you should look at this activity, you should say why, you should explain, so that we they know what they should do. So also this is the main change for you. Uh, all these standards I will be able to send it to you by email, so I will send you this document the markup so that way you can see it and you can see the difference and we will send you the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Let's go over another one. Audit responsibility. So what they are saying here, remember again, now we are doing what we are outsourcing most of the work, so that way we need to change something related to the standards. They are saying we are going to change the external, and we are going to add something related to the external service provider and the organization responsibility of the internal audit. To ensure that the organization will maintain the responsibility of the internal audit when they are outsourcing that. Audit. So it's the standard 2017, let's go for it. So look what they added here. They say the external service provider and the organizational responsibility for internal auditing when an external audit uh, provider serves as an internal audit uh, uh, activity. The provider must make the organization aware that the organization has the responsibility for maintaining an effective internal audit activity. See, you need to when you are doing this consulting engagement, you need to tell them from the beginning you are responsible for the uh, for maintaining the control. It's not me. I'm just going there to make sure that you are following. Uh, and like your standards. At the same time, the responsibility is demonstrated through the quality assurance and improvement program which assists the conformance with the definition of internal audit code of ethics and the standards. See what they added here, it's really important, it's two text section. The first one, you need to tell them that it's their responsibility to follow their standards and you need to know that it's your responsibility to follow your standards when you are conducting that internal audit program. So it's two things, their responsibility and your responsibility. Clear? Let's move over to the second section, which is the last section, risk management. So for risk management, what they change? They say, for risk management, we need to make sure that the understanding of the organization risk management process and their effectiveness. So it's related to 2,100. So what they, what they add? They say the internal audit activity may gather the information to support the assessment during multiple engagement and the result of this engagement when viewed together provide an understanding of the organization risk management process and their effectiveness. So what they are saying here, your role as an internal auditor is not just to go and follow everything but at the same time you need to assess the risk in general and over multiple engagement if you have enough information you'll be able to support the management and tell them how they can manage the risk much better by providing all the information that you have and at the same time support it. So this is the main change related to risk management. Why? Because now, over many engagements, you are collecting all this information, and many organizations, they have some risk issues. So if you're really aware of it, you can really communicate it to them and buy from it this time. These 
all of the changes in the standard, see, we have some minor changes related to like adding some of the, some of the programs and procedures and putting them back. So what they are saying here, these are minor changes, but just let me go over it. Do you remember when we are doing an internal audit, what are we doing as an internal audit? First, we are making sure that the financial is fine, right? Number one, did you remember financial? Number two, we are making sure that they are for, uh, the operation is fine. It's effective, it's efficient. They're efficient. But what they are saying here, we are adding operation and programs. Why? Many organizations now, it's not just about operations. They have certain programs. They have a program, let's say, related to uh, diversity, to make sure that they are getting employees from everywhere. They have other programs related to uh, social responsibility. So that way, we are auditing not just operation, we are auditing programs. At the same time, when we are looking at complying with the rules and regulations, it's not just complying with uh, laws, regulations, and any other information, but at the same time, uh, complying with procedures and, and what policies of the organization itself. So it's not just for complying with everything outside the organization, you need to comply with everything in the organization. And you can see this significantly in what in the banking sector, because in the banking sector, they are following everything from outside, but they are giving loans and violating the, the rules and regulations of the bank itself. For that, they added this section there. So now we covered most of the standards. Let's go over the glossary. So that way, for the glossary, what they changed? They had six changes, but this uh, the, the, the significant things. We have something related to add value, something related to chief audit executive, and independence. Let's go over them one by one. So what they say, we change add value a little bit because your role now as an internal auditor is not just to go and confirm that everything is fine, but at the same time you need to always want add value. So the new definition is the internal audit activity adds value to the organization and its shareholders when it provides objective, relevant assurance, number one, and contributes to the efficiency, uh, effectiveness and efficiency of the governance, risk management and control process. So now your role is to to make sure that they are following the rule and at the same time to contribute to, to the effectiveness and efficiency of their operation. So this is the first change. After that they changed the chief audit executive. Why? Because of the outsourcing. What happened? See, before they are saying chief audit executive is the senior position within the organization. Now they said no. Now the chief audit executive is, a, 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 is described as a person in a senior position. He's in a senior position but maybe he's not in the organization. And at the same time, what they focus here is that, uh, let's see here, um, he's managing the internal audit activity in according with the charter, uh, definition of internal audit ethics and standards, the chief audit executive and others reporting to the chief audit executive will have appropriate professional certification, qualification, the uh, specific job title and, uh, as chief audit executive may vary from organization to another. So these are the main changes that happen to change the definition of the chief audit executive. The final one is related to independence. So what they say, they say now the freedom for you to be independent, the freedom from conditions that threaten the ability of the internal audit activity to carry out the internal audit responsibility in an unbiased manner. So that way, it's, this is the meaning of independence. That it's not just that you are out of the organization, but at the same time you are not threatened by anyone for you to be able to perform. So this is in summary all the changes in the standards. You can see they change a lot and if you are studying using the old standards and you are taking the CI exam, many of the questions you may not uh, answer correctly. 